draft strategy. First one I want to kind of talk about here is one that I don't tend to follow. I did it one season and it probably was my worst season um, because you can quickly, quickly falter if you don't get the right guys. And that is zero RB. Um, zero RB meaning that you fade drafting a running back for at least the first four rounds. Um, and, and so you're looking to get your receivers, you're looking to get a quarterback or a tight end and really build on those other positions till at least the fifth round. And to, then you're finally taking a running back and that could hurt you if you have a running back heavy drafting league. Because, yeah, you may gobble up all these good guys, the Jeffersons, your Waddle, and then you got yourself some home run at quarterback and a good tight end. But if you can't, if you don't have a sustainable running back uh, back there and you have a split carry running back, that's what happened to me that season. And one injury away at running back position and you're done. Um, those guys can't sustain the points from you week to week. I don't like to follow it anymore, but I could see – depending upon where you are in the draft, especially if you maybe are in the 11th or 12th spot, you have a chance to get two top 10 wide receivers under your belt right away and then coming around, get another quarterback and a tight end. And then that fifth round, you're looking at your running back. It, it could be a possibly a good spot to take this draft strategy. Yeah, I'm typically not a big fan of this one either. Um, now, there there's years I've done it where I have not drafted a running back until the fourth round, um, where I think that's an, a decent strategy to do if you hit the right players. But that's the big thing is like, it's a big if. It's so much easier to hit the guys, the mid-tier receivers, than it is to hit mid-tier running backs. Because the top end running backs are at least going to have just high floors for you. So you get that consistency. And even we've seen this even last year with the with Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, there were weeks where they they just disappear and or they have sub 10 point games. And then you rely on that player in your first round to be your consistency. And that's really always what I look for, at least with how I draft. But with a zero running back strategy, it can be effective, like John said, it, especially at the later the you know, if you're 10, 11, 12, um, the year I did, I think I was five, and I went Devontae Adams, and then I can't remember who else I went with, um, but I didn't go running back until, like, the third round uh, on it. But I went, you know, quarterback, maybe. I might have went quarterback and, and gotten Mahomes or, or Deshaun Watson's MVP year. I don't, I don't remember, but regardless, if you're in the 10, 11, 12 spot and you have a chance to go and get two elite uh, wide receivers, or you have a chance to get like Travis Kels and then an elite wide receiver. Um, there are interesting things you can do because if you go and get, you know, you're an elite tight end, an elite quarterback, an elite wide receiver, but then in the fourth, fifth, and sixth round, you draft just heavy running back there. Like the zero running back strategy is, is effective if when you start drafting running backs, you go on a four round tear of just taking the best running back available. And yeah. you better get, you better have like you better leave the draft with four or five running backs that you are going to be playing matchup base and trying to play the best play. The, the the beauty about having at least one high end running back is at least you have one position there. Like you don't have to worry about a flex guy, you know, running back you could throw in your flex, but you do have a guy that you can you're playing with one position versus two, um, and that's that's kind of how I look at my team and roster management is like. How can I eliminate, like, how can I set in stone the most slots per position? Like, if I know I have Jalen Hurts at quarterback, like, I don't ever have to sub another quarterback in. If I know I have Christian McCaffrey at running back, I at least have one of my two running back slot. So if you have elite positions, but you have two running back slots that you have to fill, it's better to have at least one of those filled where it's an every week starter, you know what you're going to get with him, and then that second position is somewhere you can play matchup base because if you're playing matchup base with two positions, um, there's going to be weeks where you dud on both. Like it's just not it's not as predictive as you would think. Even with opportunity, um, especially in standard, uh, you are more reliant on touchdowns, and the the consistency for touchdowns is is better with running backs than it is wide receivers. Yeah. Uh, so that it's I've always. 
I I really very rarely run a zero running back strategy. Um, I think that there are better strategies out there um, than zero running back. Yeah, I mean, I did so, zero running back, I think, in 2016. And I loved my zero running back strategy, and it would have been perfect. Um, but I, I said it again, an injury away from really screwing you over. And, and then if you, you get in a position where you're going to have to make a move and trade for somebody, and then you just completely dismantle that zero running back uh, draft that you did. I mean, I went... Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Sammy Watkins. Three absolute studs. Sammy Watkins, that was the year of that foot injury where he barely played. So now I'm down to two wide receivers. All right. I had Jeremy Hill and Melvin Gordon as my top two running backs. And this was a, when a young Derrick Henry was in there, so it wasn't how he was before. Luckily, I had Stefan Diggs kind of stepping up a little bit, but he was still, it was a late draft on him. I had to trade away somebody, one of my receivers, early to get my running game up and I traded a little bit too early because the week I traded the week after Sammy Watkins was out and now I was left with one receiver and that was Julio Jones and that was it and so I was just riddled completely across the board I was scrapping together waiver wire so you you do expose yourself but you can also be a just a beast when it comes week to week with points if you get three guys that just are putting up 1400 yard 10 plus touchdown seasons like it's gonna be hard to beat you yeah, so. I mean, again, but you still need to hit on at least one of those mid-tier running backs where yes, at least they do. become a more consistent guy. Well, and I um, did that year. Melvin the, Gordon. Year, a good strategy for zero running back is to go and get some of these rookies that might end up taking the, the starting role mid, you know, mid-season or early on in the season because then the, you can get them low in the draft. Um, you can stack those guys and, and say, all right, now mid-season comes around or late-season comes around, like – my wide receiver play can get me to the playoffs, but how am I going to win a championship? Right. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not about winning the early season. It's about winning late in the season. So if you go and draft these high end wide receivers, you can go and get these guys that will come on late. Um, like Brian, Brian Robinson last year was consistent and he was a guy that you could have drafted in, the, in a zero running back strategy. Um, e, you know, ETN went higher than you would have liked, uh, uh, like you know, like for him, but we've talked about other guys. Ramondre like Stevenson for, went went late in the draft too. Would have been Ramondre Stevenson for you. went late. Um, you know, well let, let's let, let me bring up a couple names that are in that fifth, sixth, seventh range round that that you would get. And we're looking based on sleeper ADP right now. You're looking at Damian Pierce. Wouldn't be a bad option to have as a running back. You're or looking at My, yeah, you're looking at Miles Sanders. Uh, you're looking at James Conner right now. Cam Akers. Like those are four names right there that I'd be comfortable. Uh, as my RB1, and then even Rashad White's on this list too. Like You fill with two of those guys. Like I said before, you get James Conner, Cam Akers, you know, you're in a At position. At least one of them's going to have, right? Yeah, you're going to be successful. They're going to get volume. You're going to be successful in the running game. It's not going to be where you're going to win your, your weeks at running back, but you're going to win your weeks at wide receiver. And you're right. going to win your weeks, uh, you know, with your quarterback or your but they're not tight end. Week. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and um, that's the thing is like, how can we get consistent at each position? Yeah. And so,